Western Spain Television. Ours it is. Local government administration in Nigeria has undergone several changes since it evolved from the native authority system that was essentially an instrument of colonial power over the indigenous community. Apart from that, it was the only effective channel employed by the British imperial government to get the traditional rulers do its bidding. A true state, created in August 1991, has in the previous 133 years practiced or experimented with local government system of administration under different platforms dictated by the nature of the administration in place. Today, we are looking at the local government administration in Austrian state along the parameters of grassroots development. How effective has the Adelic administration influenced the thought here of government to carry the gains of public policy to the local level in such ways that the local government can deliver democracy dividends to indigents and residents of Austrian state who majorly live in the rural community. My name is Tomilola Daniel, your uncle on Living Spring Update, the program that explains development driven administration of Governor Demola Deleke. This is exception on the 10th of November 2022. Governor Ademola Adeleke did not inherit a democratically elected local government administration on assuming office. Rather, what was in place was a contraption and a byproduct of a questionable election, which was dubious in character and purpose. The yes or no election organized by the defunct APC administration did not reflect the genuine desires of the people. It therefore attracted debates and litigations at the law courts. Today, Governor Demala Deleke is determined to make governance at the third tier a true reflection of its constitutional obligation. The Ministry of Local Government and Chieftaincy Affairs has been repositioned to execute this constitutional requirement. The State Commissioner for Local Government and Chieftaincy Affairs, Barrister Doshu Babatunde, told Living Spring Update that getting the ministry to be on top of whatever challenges the state government is faced with is not only a priority but an article of fate with the people. When we came on board, the local government was in its in complete shambles. Buildings were collapsing. Rules were leaking. In fact, offices were not habitable. We had to uh, immediately mobilize the local government itself to do and uh, comprehensive repairs of the buildings. Even chairmen do not even have seats. No place. To, the offices were were collapsing. No nowhere to sit on. So there will under the massive renovation of the local councils and put in place in such a way that the office can be habitable for human beings. And so you can you see that there have been tremendous changes in the local government buildings and secretariats. So and after that, we ensure that workers because before now, workers don't even go to work. Because what are they going to do there? There is disenchantment. So, but now people are eager, the workers are eager to go to work. We have brought back the old glory back to the local government because it used to be a beehive of activities in the past. So, we have returned that old glory back to local government. He recalled Governor Deleke's engagement with the people through their traditional rulers at the inception of his government, where he opened up on the financial situation which he inherited. According to the commissioner, series of reforms being put in place by his ministry to strengthen the local government system are in alliance with the thinking of Governor Deleke for even development of Ocean State. Like never before, workers were hold salaries. In those were the days of Afusat, meaning half salary. But those those era is gone. The present government ably led by the governor is a is a is a worker friendly governor and he's doing everything possible to ensure that workers are well paid all the since he came on board 
promotions that have been granted to workers. Salaries are going on smoothly. And the uh, pensioners are also not left out because people who had worked for 35 years, 30 years and retired, they become uh, aged and they needed to be taken care of. And they are entitled to their pensions and gratuities. The government is doing everything in its powers to ensure that um, uh, the senior citizens are well taken care of as per their rights. Besides that, uh, workers in Oshun State, because it is one of the six point agenda of a governor, workers' welfare is number one. And it's not taking chances about it. This government meant well and it's uh, delivering on its promises with respect to the welfare of workers. The Ministry of Local Government and Chieftaincy Affairs is politically structured into three pivotal organs coordinated by two special advisors and headed by a commissioner. Honorable Adams Akintude Akindeere, a special advisor on chieftaincy affairs. He explained how the ministry has operated to deepen consultations between government and the traditional institution to promote harmony, peace and development at the local government level. These beliefs will ensure the success of reforms being put in place to make local government truly representative. The relationship between governors, government and the Obas in Oshun State. We have a very cordial relationship. And um, before taking any decision in the state, let me use one uh, Yoruba that used to say that a joba. Ijo is Ijoba is uh, is Ijo Amoba. Uh, the kings, the Obas in Oshun, they are the ones that used to advise the government. This is where you go to, this is what you do at this time, this is where you must look into. We can't just be doing something without them. We have a very good cordial relationship together. Sir. Oshun State has grappled with teachers surrounding succession and filling of vacant schools in some towns and communities in the state. This is a fallout of unresolved and oftentimes controversial treatment of tenancy disputes by the immediate past APC administration. The governor Ademola Adeleke also inherited this problem, but did not run away from it. He faced it head on. What were the mechanisms adopted by the Ministry of Local Government and Tenancy Affairs? To solve this problem, how did the ministry, how did the ministry achieve a balance of interest where centers for traditional schools became controversial? Before the government came on board, there were some notable chieftains that generated uh, a lot of uh, controversies, and even in some places, town, town hall and palaces were set on fire. You recall that it happened in. Uh, Ikirun here, as well as in Iri, this government had been able to put in place uh, set the material in motion, and they have, uh, we've appointed another oba in, in, in Iri, and the town had been it's been well accepted by the people, the generality of the people in Iri. The same thing at Ibajo, an oba had emerged and it's been installed. So we are gradually solving all the problems that it had to happen before we came on board. Because when there is peace in each of the communities, it's only then that we can have, that government can, uh, people can feel the, the impact of the government. So we are, in a situation where there is no peace, there cannot be a, a development in the communities. So all those communities are now enjoying peace. They all have their they are kings and uh, everybody is happy for it. A 
Apart from the constitutionally recognized local government councils, Oshun State has 31 local council development areas created by previous administrations. The Supreme Court judgment raised a number of issues which require a new approach to the local council as a third tier of government. As such affects the status and funding of local council development areas in the state. Ti won fè ta o fin lo ju, ni won ti gba, we, bidi da jò xe rinyen, ka bè lè si tèlè, a ti gba yon la lè si tèlè. Bo bo, so bo, a won si xe, bo bo, a won pensionans, bo bo, a won, bo bè latin, a ti won ti cha, bo bè latin xe. To dan xe tru, la ti pase a won, loka gò mè fun ra won. Godi Olije, special advisor to the governor on local government affairs, did not envisage any problem in the coordination, funding, and efficiency of local government administration to fulfill its mandate to the people of Ocean State. <laughs> And then we pay the the Ministry of Local Government and Chieftaincy. See our four or raw, or ye jije, or raw, Uboto Jomon, or raw, the Joba, E. Bile, Lati, the Guru, Ujuto. Is she one in the money we pay? What they gave me a bedroom of food, the Joba, E. Bile, see, the Joba, E. Bile. A factor very germane to the capacity of local government to deliver on its mandate may have been identified by the Supreme Court judgment. That is the factor of funding. More funds are expected to come into the coffers of local government and will in the process advance living standards of rural dwellers. However, this is determined by the capability of career officers in the various local governments to key into the reforms, remove bureaucracy, promote accountability and efficiency. Is the ministry prepared to embrace the reforms and work for its success? Femi Ogundun, the Permanent Secretary Ministry of Local Government and Chieftaincy Affairs and Dr. Adewale Adedapo, the Head of Local Government Administration, speak on this. You know, the... Supreme Court ruling came in the middle of July and immediately the state complied. You will recall that the, we had caretaker committees in all the local governments. So immediately the Supreme Court declared the caretaker committees illegal. The, all the caretaker committee members resigned and uh, power was passed over to the head of local government administration, the HLAs in the local councils who are holding forth now, pending the uh, elections slated for February next year in Ocean State. So immediately the judgment came, the ministry swung into action and we've been implementing the judgment so far. The judgment said the joint allocation account is not a holding account because their money is still coming to the joint allocation account since the local governments don't have direct accounts with the federation account. So immediately it got into the joint account, we sent it directly. To the local councils. You will recall that Mr. Governor has severally been awarded the most worker friendly governor in the country, and this is no fluke. This is because he takes staff welfare as number one, both states and local government workers. Presently, we collect our salaries as at one deal without any deductions or without any reduction. And even those deductions and reductions that were held in the past the government has been paying according to the agreement and the plans that it had. Some are paid quarterly, collected palliative for six months. We've been collecting our half salary, the one that was owed in the past, and things have been going on well. In terms of training, for a very long time, there was no training for anybody because funds were not released in the past. 
but trainings for different categories it's an ongoing thing and even staff promotion and things like that in the past i was a coordinating director it was this administration that abolished that non-existing post because in the service there's nothing called a coordinating director what we know is a permanent secretary so this government and this administration appointed permanent secretaries and abolished coordinating director so so far so good we've been having it very good as staff with this administration the government takes local governments as a very as the centerpiece of development this administration believes that if the councils are well developed the pressure on the state will even be reduced because majority of our people reside in the local areas and that is why it has always taken the welfare of people at the grassroots to be number one and that is what it keeps doing the farmers there opening up of roads grading of roads construction of roads rehabilitation of roads rehabilitation of schools primary school buildings if you go around the state two rounds of rehabilitation exercises are, are taking place in all the 30 local governments in the state the dilapidated buildings have been restored completely not partial uh, rehabilitation full rehabilitation if you get to a school where they have four or five buildings that are dilapidated those buildings are pulled down and a complete set of new buildings are constructed and equipped with equipment, with furniture that will make learning conducive for both the staff and the teachers. And so this is an ongoing thing that is a, is a continuous exercise. It's not a one-off thing. So by the time this government spends the first four years, the rural communities would have been transformed. The relationship between the government and the traditional rulers is top notch because we realize that the traditional rulers they are actually the owners of these communities. They are in charge of security, they are in charge of a lot of things, and they are in charge of the peace and tranquility of these rural areas. So if the traditional rulers are okay in terms of their welfare, they will be able to take care of the communities, they will be able to take care of the people, and the burden of the state government will be reduced and less. The administration of uh, Governor of Washington State, Senator Dr. Jackson Ludin Ademuladeleke, is doing wonderfully very well. Of course, before the advent of this government, we've had a series of bottlenecks at the local government system. But when the governor came, came on board, he made sure that every other areas that needed to be addressed were addressed properly. And as I speak with you now, you can see the touch of the governments in almost every ramification and areas of development in the local government. So we're happy with that. I'll give him 100. The work is going on in the local government. Uh, because I said the government is doing very well, he had touched areas like uh, primary health care. You can see that in most of our local governments, we had our health centers renovated recently when the government came on, on board. The schools, the primary schools, were also renovated as well. Aside from that, the proper and uh, prompt supply of drugs to the health centers were there. The best of it, that every water, worker would have appreciated in life, is the payments of their pack packages. The government is paying the salary as and when due. As I speak with you today, the government, the government of Governor Adimola Deleke does not owe any local government workers a dime. So people are so the, the, the people at the local governments at the grassroots are glad to have this kind of government in place. So financially we are good now. And if you go to all, all, all councils now, I want to remind you of the issues of the NSAS in the last three years. Most of these councils were touched by the NSAS, but the previous government could not do anything about that. As I speak with you now, most of these offices were being relocated because the governor released funds for that. And the issues of uh, not being able to pay the impress has gone to be things of the past. We pay impress as and when we pay uh, leave bonus as and when to people. So local government now is, bo is buoyant, local government now is good. And developmental infrastructures are going on smoothly at local government level. No. Olola Julo, Ademola Nuridin Jackson, Adeleke, that be your image saying to you, what you are Luria Lefa, Nick Milosho, or the Sai Pama, Luri or Joba Bile, Luria Moya as a cuckoo, Luria Moshi Share, Tonsi Sandy Joba Bile, at any Ekmele, Yato Giddy Giddy Tiwa, 
laarin bi kaseri tele ati bi oseri nisin ni gbugbu ona ti a ba fe so nipa ti awon osise ni ati awon to sise ni ijoba bile ni ati awon to sise ni ijoba ipinle ni ije to ti wa owo osu ti so dede ati gbugbu awon ajemonu ati anfani ati eto ti o je ti osise o lo dede ati awon ti won ti feyin ti gan won gbagbe won lori ko re ni won pin bond fun awon ti won wa lori contributory pension awon to de je old scheme ni pension and gratuity won o lo pe gege bi o se ye ko lo in fact leni jo meta eni ijoba tun fi won si ori eto adoju to fun ni pa ti health health insurance scheme ta fi won si ara kan ti ara kan tutun to je pe ijoba yi lo lo gbe jade ni pe na si ni eto idagba soke ni awon ise kokuwa nipa ona ni o ati awon ile ti won da oda ni o ati awon ile ti won grade ni o ati pese awon nkan leni jo meta ni ijoba ra tractor so ye awon agbe o ma ri lo ni awon local government wa so eni pa eto eko awon iyato ti ba opolopo awon idewe alako bere nipa building school buildings ni o nipa ijoko ti won fi se ijoko ni o nipa awon nkan ti won fi nko eko ni awon ilewe wa ni o so ipa pataki ni ijoba itini duro oro awon eyan wa ni ise kuku ati ni ijoba bi kakre ile osu that the local government is a private of development is not debatable that sufficient funding of local government is a guarantee for comprehensive social economic and political stability of nation is also not questionable the reason for this is that real development comes from the grassroots, where Nigerians in their majority lead. What is the scorecard of the Adelic administration in fulfilling the core values of building wealth at the grassroots? By the time the policy measures being worked upon through appropriate legislations are in place, a true state will be in a position to be counted as a model in the execution of the much needed constitutional and statutory reforms at the third tier of government. And that's where we close the pattern today on Living Spring Update, episode 5. Join us again next week for another edition. I am Tomi Lola Daniel. Bye for now. Living Spring Update is a production of the Office of the Spokesperson to the Governor, Governor's Office, Oshobo.